Hey everybody, welcome back. Walker here with episode number 36 of our Thumbcraft Let's Play series. I am still ill, so we will uh, make cuts where we need to to uh, remove my loud hacking and coughing. But I am a little bit more coherent today, so hopefully we won't um, have any of those fun times, right? Uh, I'm still recording during the day, so there is still some background traffic noise going on. Uh, I usually try and record around um, 9 or 10 at night when most of the traffic has died down, but uh, uh, in order to try and actually get some sleep, I've been going to sleep earlier, um, and therefore I have to record earlier, so traffic noises, hooray. Uh, today, I said we were going to do some more Thomic Horizons, um, a creature infusions, uh, and mm. you know what? We will. And I also said we were going to do some Thomic Esoterica seal bindings, and we will. I actually have it all set up and ready to go. The thing is, is I was looking through my book, and, um, I happened to take a big, a, a much deeper look at the Soul Sieve, the Inspiratron, and the Soul Forge, and I'm definitely going to make them today. Uh, at the very bare minimum, the Soul Sieve and the Soul Forge. The Inspiratron sounds like it works very much like uh, Esoterica's um, think tank. Uh, let's go in real fast and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, leaving aside the ethical implications, feeding soul fragments to a brain in a jar strikes you as wasteful. After all, the ancients must have possessed useful knowledge of one sort or another. What if it could be recovered from the remnants of their souls? Which we'd get by using the soul seed. We'll see that in a second. I read it. I haven't made one yet. But anyway, while staring at one of your jarred brains, a strange idea seized you. Were you to purge the zombie brain of its single-minded hunger, you would be left with a blank slate. A brain capable of reliving the experiences of any soul fragment passing through it. Here's where we get to uh, the Inspiratron, as you have named it, does exactly that. Once provided with paper and situated above a soul seed, the device sifts through the memories it receives and transcribes any it judges to be thaumaturgically useful. Mm -hmm. Number of useful memories in any particular clue, the soul sand varies widely. Mm. One may produce a considerable amount of knowledge, while the next contributes almost nothing. It sounds very similar to the think tank, except it uses paper mm. instead of books, and it requires a soul sieve um, instead of just uh, wherever I put the tank, a bookcase with nothing around it, right? So, um,. Maybe later we'll make it, but the thing is, is if I'm reading this right, the Soul Sieve, you put the Inspiratron on top of the Soul Sieve, or you put a Soul Forge on top of the Soul Sieve. So if I'm reading it correctly, it's one or the other, not both. I originally thought it was both, but it isn't. So we're going to do the Soul Sieve and the Soul Forge, because the Soul Forge sounds like I can create villagers. Um, you may create blacksmiths, soul librarians, or any other terrors. So, um, or at least their souls. Um, so we're going to see what that's about, because those would be more useful than that, especially considering I'm almost done. Thunder. Uh, I'm almost done with almost pretty much all the research in here, so that doesn't help us any at all. So, um... Let's uh, go upstairs. Oh, I also made myself my levitator. Oh, I never scanned it. Okay, which you put down and it'll levitate you up 10 blocks. And I also made something from Thomic Tinkerer called an ethereal platform, which I have covered, as, uh, hidden as a netherrack, but there it is, the ethereal platform, okay. Very useful. It acts as a solid block unless you sneak on top of it. In which case you can pass down through. So now I have myself a mystical elevator, so I don't have to keep running back down the stairs all the time. I still do, but till I get used to running over here to go down. Um, up here we have our table set up to make the first part, the soul sieve. And then um, before I read them, I like I said, I thought they both they all worked on one soul sieve, so I made 
three brain in a jars and then I actually started reading them. I was like, oh, oops. So um, we can use the brain in the jar. I mean, we're still going to make the Inspiratron and we'll have to make a second Soul Sieve just to see how it works. But um, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to do this first. So we'll, we'll either set the jar down to collect experience from our butchery that we are still in the process of moving or we'll just store it somewhere else. Anyway, um, I have this table set up and I should have enough Essentia to do it. It doesn't take a lot for the Soul Seed. Um, just eight Spiritus, eight Machina, and eight Permutata. Per that one. And then two Pistons, two Enchanted Claws, two uh, Amber, and one yeah. One of them. Wow. My brain is just not functioning today, is it? Anyway, there's our Soul Sieve. It looks pretty darn cool. I think this is probably my favorite, uh, at least item texture out of uh, Atomic Horizons. I mean, the curative that's pretty cool, but it could it could use a little bit of work, but this thing was pretty darn cool. Now then, if I read it correctly, and I guess I should read it with you guys, I think I did once. Uh, Thick sand you've discovered during your forays into the nether is a profoundly disturbing substance. The screaming faces which writhe below its surface are no mere illusion. Their studies have detected minuscule remnants of innumerable shattered souls, human, animal, and otherwise. Uh, you're no closer to understanding Soul Sand's origins, but one use for the substance has presented itself by constructing an elaborate combination sieve and dream catcher. The Soul Sieve. You can separate the physical sand from the soul fragments it holds. Soul Sieve drops sand below itself into an inventory if possible, while the liberated souls ascend skyward. If a brain in the jar is placed above the sieve, it will consume soul fragments and convert them into. Ooh, I didn't know that. So I could put that extra one on top and just get free experience for burning up soul sand. Uh, Sieve operates slowly on its own, but providing it with air sent V will greatly speed up its operation. It also has built-in shutoff mechanism to avoid wasting soul fragments and will not function and if appropriate block is not on top of it. Oh, okay. Um, ah, darn. We need to put this thing down somewhere nearby where there's some air. There we go. All right, so um, I was trying to keep all the Atomic Horizon stuff in the same room, but I think we're going to have to put this guy down over here somewhere. Unless you guys want me to go out and find another node. I mean, we can do that later. We're going to put that there. Uh, do I have a chest? Do I have any chests? Uh, even a freaking hungry chest will work. I don't know. I've used so many chests. Anything? Yeah, we'll just use a hungry chest for now. I know I shouldn't, but eh. All right, put that there. I see. Okay, so you could probably put a hopper up against it and, you know, have it. Um, and we're only going to do it 64 at a time. Okay, Um, next up, the Soul Forge. We need... Oh, look at that. We do happen to have some golden apples. We need a warded jar. We need two V-filters. So, the brains in a jar. Get it there. And there. The two golden apples go across from each other. I need some V filters, which means I need silver. Oh no, wait, it's silver with logs, isn't it? Is it one and two or two and one? Oh man, I'm so bad at this. Um. Oh, it is silver wood planks, and it's two and one. I have a terrible memory for uh, stuff like that. We will eventually put our modified runic matrix back on top of our um, thingy. Come on. There we go. There's one. Get the other one. So that we can modify some more creatures. 
Can you get in it? Hey. You're just standing around doing nothing. Did you get it? He got it in the time it took me to turn around and yell at him for not getting it yet. That is hilarious. Alrighty. Let me see here. What else do we need? That, 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 there, there. I need a warded jar. Oh, shoot. I don't even know if I have any. I really don't feel like making anymore. That was close enough to that to start floating towards it. Oh, yeah, I guess it's right directly underneath it, actually. All right, so you notice how he's turned off? I, I forgot to mention this, I think. I set up a very redundant little system down here um, that I said I was going to do. <clears throat> it's watching that one jar. So if that jar is full, it really, uh, outputs a signal, um, a 15 strength signal. Uh, that's why I have 15 redstone there to the fetter with the golemic inhibitor. Turning that on and then turning him off because I don't want him breaking down seeds and then those getting caught, thrown into here which then cooks up into here and then bogs the system down because then he'll fill his jar up and he'll have no place to put it. Don't worry, eventually we're going to have a way of not having to deal with that so much. I mean, we still will, but not as um, quickly, I guess would be the word. Alright, let's see here. And notice how I went down the stairs? I didn't mean to. Uh, you guys got to remind me to go down the uh, little thing that I made. Okay, we need 32 Cognito, 16 Fabrico, 16 Permutatio, 16 Sano, 16 Spiritus. Alright, Spiritus, got plenty. Fabrico, got fab, fab. Uh, Permutatio got plenty. Fabrico got plenty. Cognito got plenty. What else was it? Oh, Sano? <laughs> we'll never run out of Sano anymore. Is that it? That was it. We got all of it. High instability. Let's go check out what this thing does. Oh. Whee! Alrighty, hit that. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna say, get me Soul Sand. There it is. Bring me two stacks of soul sand, little buddy. If this works the way it says it should, it's gonna be pretty darn cool. I don't... I assume... I assume... You take... The, um... Oh, didn't it say something about... Spiritron. Ba, 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 ba. Cognito right into its lid yet. Um where did I put that? Ah. See, this is why we have this paper. Get twenty. Oh man. Pow! Oh, look at that. So yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite textured items. Um, just because of how nice and detailed it is. Uh, I can already tell the hitbox isn't fixed. It's based off hopper code, I'm sure. So, Because I know you can... Um, fix that because I've seen other mods that have hoppers that do not have the hitbox just as the block um, Anyway, so apparently the soul forge goes on top And then what? Large enough to fill a brain the loops terminate and it is extracted into a holding jar. Ah, I need another jar. I gotta make another jar, guys. I don't have enough. And there. 
All right, while they're getting that stuff, uh, I need to go. Oh, uh, down. There we go. Because I need apparently a lot of cognate, though, so. I know paper is probably the best source for that for us right now with our ridiculously large sugarcane farm. Thanks, little buddy. Alrighty. I only need one, I think. It did say a jar. I assume it means a warded jar. Like so. And then it says it needs air goes into that one and it needs cognito piped into there. So, wait, does, do I need to? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I think I see what it's doing. Oh, I see. That's, a, that's the jar it puts it in, I think. And then we need to pipe it in on the top. Let's, let's, uh, we have any pipes? Oh, you know where I can find pipes? I don't, I don't need any pipes. Get our pickaxe out. Uh, because I did move everything out of here into here, I just haven't put my butcher uh, going down yet. Nor have I done the Victus jar thing yet. Um, but I do have a pipe that's just sitting here doing nothing now. Oh! No, get back down there. We, we got pipe all over the place now. There we go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Bah! Going all over the place, man. Let's get this done, right? Alright, we should be done cooking up the cognito. Down, 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 down. Which, of course, means now I get to. Ha! <laughs> uh, stupid attractor. I gotta get that turned off too when I'm not doing anything with it. Went back up the stairs on accident. It'll take me a long time before I uh, get that right. Alright, nope. It must be... Yep, it is that way. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, so what we gotta do... Let's get all this stuff up here. Take some soul sand. Uh, I apparently already had some in there. That's fine. Come over here. Oh, did I scan the darn thing yet? Nope. Okay. And it's giving it air. Okay. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Oh, it did something. Uh. You're supposed to spit it out into the hungry chest. That ain't good. Uh, make a mashup of an ugly, ugly chest. Wouldn't that suck? Oops, yeah. Wouldn't that suck if your chest looked like all the different... Well, I guess it could be kind of cool. If your chest had the texture of all the different kinds of wood that you use to make it. I guess it could be kind of cool. Arr. Yeah, it's just spitting it out. It's supposed to put it in, right? I thought it was supposed to drop it into the receptacle. So, what's it doing? I mean... It doesn't look like it's doing it, so it just spat it out. Alright, I see a couple of issues with this thing. Number one, it's just spitting it out. Um, the top of the apparatus, soul forge must be placed directly above a soul sieve in addition to the cars that can, it can contain any number of restructured souls, but requires... But removing one from a device requires you to right-click with the warded jar. Okay, so next time I shouldn't um, read through things so quickly. How about, um... 
this. Also has built in there. Drop sand below itself into an inventory if possible. While the liberated souls ascend skyward, if a crane in the jar is placed directly above the sea, it will consume soul fragments. Convert them into this. Okay, so um, Walker um, sees an issue with that, and he's going to fix it right now. Using our old friend, uh, the Hopper, the name that I couldn't remember earlier. Now I can remember it just fine. Don't you love how that happens? Uh, give me two. Oh, shoot. He's going to go up and drop all of it. Yep, there it is. I'm sorry, little guy. I meant... Uh, I always get the stupid... Um... Keys messed up. All right, let's get that. Need that there. And where is I haven't? Hey, that's only four, buddy. You getting it for me? There you are. You're such a good little buddy. I definitely need to get some speed upgrades for you guys. I already have the air upgrade, but I think it's the bow tie. We give them a little bit more speed, and I mean, once I get a sheet, I'm, I'm gonna have a self-sharing sheet. Once I get that all set up, it'll be wicked cool to see the guys going around with their bow ties. So that should be cool. Stop it, and we'll go into the hopper, and the hopper should put it in the chest, so let's see. As for this... And it didn't work. <sighs> I don't know why he does that. I really don't. Um, but it's really annoying. Alright, so instead we're going to have to put... Um, Here's what we'll do. Let's see if that works. I see what happens. A little soul is floating around up top. I don't know if... Um... Okay, get back here a little bit. Yep, okay. That fixed it. So that's not working uh, as intended. But we can now take our awarded jar and right click. Jarred Villager Soul. And I have no idea what we can do with that. Nothing can be learned from that. No clue what we can do with that. But I guess we'll put it over here with the rest of our jarred collection. It's kind of cool. Um, did that... Reincarnation. Oh, wait a minute. Of course I know what you can do with it. It's right here. I create the corpse effigy. Um, uh, pumping eight units each of Sound Invictus into the vat's base, then reinserting the jarred soul by right clicking somewhat confused villager. Um, so I have to make a corpse effigy. I got time. Four flesh, four bone, and a brain. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and a brain. Mm -hmm. I need a bunch of Fabrico and, uh... And what? Again? Fabrico and Jimenez, 8 and 8. We're going to make ourselves a villager. Now we really are playing God. Oh yeah, we got plenty. They said we couldn't do it. They said we shouldn't try. To hell with them. 
Um, pumping eight units each of Sano and Victus. So I need at least eight Sano and eight Victus. I got enough. Uh, I need another slab. I'm gonna hook my um my jar right up to my centrifuge over there and get some Victus because I got plenty of sound already here. Um, v for Victus. I don't have any Victus in that jar. Oh, okay. Now we're starting. Slow in time. Come on, let's get all of our stuff that we need together. Enough messing around. Okay. Um, what we're gonna do is... How did it go? Okay, the rotten flesh is on the poles. North, south, east, and west. Bones are on the diagonals, and the brain is in the center, and we have plenty, so we can just let that run and then go down while that's running, and we're going to take a jar and put it right here. That'll fill it with all the Victus that's in the pipes, and then whatever else it happens to send the fuchsia. That's fine. That's all we need, really. The Sano. That's taking quite a while, isn't it? Nope, it just stopped. Corpse effigy. Look at that. Isn't that kind of creepy? Okay. So we put that in there. Do we need nutrient mix too? Does it say that we need nutrient mix? Um. Eh, no. And then insert and then inserting by right clicking can reliably produce low job by similar cookies. All right, so apparently all we really need to do now is um, put that there, put that there. Oh, hey, it's a really big headed Steve. And then we take our jar. And now it's a villager. Okay, so how do we get the villager out without killing him? Because we can't jar villagers. I guess we can. I thought you couldn't do that. I guess you can't use the, um, the uh, containment foci to jar villagers, but you can still jar a villager. Hey, look at that. We have a jarred villager who's going to stay in there. We just cloned a villager. Nice. Okay, so we got um, two different things done today. We uh, set up our soul sieve with our, um, whatchamacallit there, soul forge. And uh, that's pretty cool. I, I kind of like that. We are running low on Cognito again. What I'm probably going to do for stuff like this, I'm going to have all these um, networks all over the place. So, like, I need con Cognito, right? So I need that jar, and then I'll have a jar down in my main infusion jar room. Down here. And they'll be linked together. Same with um, Herba. Okay, I'll just link that Herba jar. With this herb jar. Actually, I can't do that because that's a void jar. That wouldn't work very well. Hmm, how could I do that? Oh, I could just put another jar right next to it. And the same with Victus. Because the Victus will get used up. And actually, I could do it with the Herba anyway because the Herba does get used. Um, it just doesn't get used as fast as the Victus does. Anyway, 
So uh, that'll be all next episode. I, I know I said I was going to do the whole jar thing this episode, but I really wanted to get... I wanted to use that soul suit because it sounded really cool and we wanted to get it set up, so I did. Anyway, that'll be the end of this episode because I'm not going to go over like last time. If you enjoyed this episode, a like down below would be much appreciated. Some comments on what you thought of the episode and, and uh, what you would like to see or what you don't want to see anymore, I guess, could want to um subscribe to my channel for more daily Thumbcraft, minecraft and dwarf fortress videos dwarf fortress is monday and wednesday and minecraft is daily monday through friday and with that i'm gonna make another uh jar to go get that other soul that just showed up and i'm gonna do that off camera and we'll call it a day and with that i guess i'll say check you later